Warning, there are people pretending to be me in the comments. This is what a comment from me looks like. Notice that the name is spelled perfectly and notice the border around the name. That's how you know it's from me. You can also click on my name to make sure you actually go to my channel to double check. And this is what a comment from an imposter will look like. It has weird characters in the name or comment and it's usually going to ask you to add them on WhatsApp or Telegram. I don't have WhatsApp or Telegram and I would never ask you to add me on there. All right, so please be careful, use your common sense, and now let's get back to the video. Hey, how's it going GPU heads? Thanks for clicking on my video. Seb Heslo here. And guys, I wanna start this video by saying that this is a bit of a, not response, but maybe like a continuation to a video that Red Fox Crypto uh, made recently on his channel, where he talks about why efficiency is so important when it comes to mining. Efficiency meaning basically how much hash rate you're getting per electricity you're spending, right? And so he's also talking about some ways that he's been able to reduce the amount of power that his mining rigs pull. And so what I will do is I'm gonna urge you to please go watch his video. I'll leave a link for that video in the description of this video, as well as add a card in the end of this video so that you can go watch his video because it's really good and it especially explains really clearly why having an efficient mining operation, if you will, is so important, especially looking into the future. But so what I wanna do here in this video today is kind of a continuation to his video where I'm gonna talk about uh, basically the three main components in your mining rig and ways, like steps you can take to reduce the power for each one of them. So without further ado, let's jump into our first part, which is the power supply. All right, so we all know that power supplies come with a mention of how many watts they are able to put out, you know, like 750 watts or 1200 watts. But as you can see here, I have a power supply box of mine here. It also comes with a symbol like this one. I don't know how well you can see it on the camera here, but it says 80 plus certified gold. And what that means is basically, well, let me put it to you this way. Like if you have a graphics card that asks for, let's say a hundred watts, well, that's not gonna be exactly how much the power supply needs to pull in order to feed the GPU that much because of power inefficiency, basically. So a different way of saying that is maybe your power supply needs to pull around 110 watts from the wall in order to feed the graphics card with the 100 watts that it needs basically because it's not a one-to-one -one ratio how much power the power supply pulls from the wall to how much power the graphics card actually gets there's an inefficiency between there and this like 80 plus certification basically means how efficient is the power supply at doing that and so the ratings basically go bronze silver gold platinum and then i think the very best one is called titanium and basically what that means is how much of the power that the power supply you know draws from the wall is it able to feed through to your computer's components basically and so an efficiency of let's say 80 percent means that if the power supply you know draws 100 watts from the wall it's only able to feed 80 watts to your computer so basically you want your power supply efficiency to be as high as possible and of course if you are buying power supplies you know getting a power supply with higher efficiency means that your overall rig is going to pull less power because of that better efficiency in the power supply itself. And now I actually have a second tip about power supplies and how to run them. And let's hop on over to the computer so I can show you better what I mean with this. All right guys, so we are over at the computer now and what I wanna to talk to you guys about is something called power supply efficiency curves. And so what I have up on the screen right now is just the manual for a Corsair RM ATX power supply basically, right? And so if we scroll down here to, I believe this is the fourth page, third page, what we see here is a curve. And so this is what we ha wanna have a look at here. So let me just zoom in on this real quick so we can see a little better. There we go. 
So what we are looking at here is basically how efficient the power supply is depending on how much you have plugged into it basically, how much your components are pulling from it. And so for example here you can see that if you know let's say the um, this is a thousand watt power supply here that they're using for the efficiency so if you have components that just pull 10 percent of that so just a hundred watts so let's say uh, uh what gpu pulls a hundred watts well kind of uh 30 70 doing ethereum that pulls 120 watts so roughly 10 percent right you can see here the efficiency if you have 230 volt that's gonna be an efficiency of what looks like 88 percent so that means if we do some math real quick is it's asking for 100 watts and the power supply has an efficiency of 88 percent which means it's actually going to pull 136 watts from the wall but so if we look here we can see how this line starts rising the more you plug into it from there. So if we go to what looks like maybe 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, maybe around, yeah, let's say 50%. So if you have components plugged into it pulling 50%, that means that the efficiency we can see here is almost 93%, which if we do this calculation again, for each you know 30 70 you have plugged into it then will be 120 divided by 93 percent efficiency 129 so you're saving almost 7 watts per gpu just by running your power supply around peak efficiency and now as you can see efficiency then starts tapering off again as we get closer and closer to hundred percent and now we don't really have to consider that because of, well, two things actually. The first one being the 80% rule, which is that you never wanna run a power supply at more than 80%, and that is for safety reasons. While a power supply might be rated for 100 watts, what it's actually capable of delivering constantly in a mining rig safely is, you know, probably, a good safe bet is more like 80% of its load. And that is to be on the safe side. So you never wanna be at more than 80%. But now, you also wanna take into account the full CDP of you know the components that you are plugging into that power supply. And so what I mean by that is, while a 3070 might pull 120 watts mining Ethereum, a 3070 is rated for 220 watts which means that if for some reason, you know, some sort of driver fails in your system or you get a software error and all of a sudden your GPU starts pulling its full power at 220 watts, that means you wanna make sure you have that headroom on your power supply so that you aren't all of a sudden pulling way more than your power supply can handle. Because, you know, best case scenario, with that is that your rig just powers down basically or like you you will trip a fuse in the power supply and no harm done worst case scenario is you overload one of the wires somewhere and your rig can actually catch fire and yeah we do not want that happening so that is why you want to make sure you have that headroom and keeping that headroom in mind of you know the 80 percent rule plus headroom for full tdp that should put us somewhere around you know the maximum efficiency on your power supply curve here which means that if you you know do all these things to make sure you're safe you will also be at your most efficient on your power supply so it really is just a win-win basically all right so now that we've finished talking about power supplies let's move on over to the most fun part right graphics cards and i'm sure by now most of you are aware that different graphics cards are differently efficient in terms of their hashing power right like their mining power basically and you know as an example you can have two cards where they both pull the same amount of power but one gives you higher hash rate 
And so if you're shopping around for graphics cards, and you know, there's a whole, you know, big calculation and, you know, massive amount of research that you can do on what is the best and most cost efficient graphics card to get. But just for, you know, simplicity in this video, just thinking about the efficiency of the graphics card when you're purchasing it and, you know, making that a part of the things you consider while you're buying a graphics card is a good idea in, you know, terms of building a mining rig that is gonna pull less power and give you more, more hash rate per power pull, basically, right? Being more efficient. And so the second tip considering graphics cards, you know, for mining is that you really wanna be spending time finding the perfect overclock and power limiting settings, especially considering, you know, locked core clock, if that is something that your GPU can do. And what a lot of people do when they first start overclocking their cards is they might just want to try to get the hash rate as high as possible, which I understand right now because mining profits are so high that like the graphics card pulling a few extra watts here and there isn't gonna make that much of a difference. But as you scale up and as you know, mining profits might go down in the future, you know, we, we can never know, then it might be a good idea to actually try to find the most efficient settings for your graphics card. So that might not exactly be, you know, at the absolute highest hash rate. So for an example, usually with something like mining Raven coin, you might get higher hash rate at close to 100% power limit of your GPU, where it's pulling almost all the power that it can. But if you lower the power limit to usually around 80%, you know, your GPU will ask for just 80% of the power but you can get almost the same amount of hash rate on many GPUs. So basically you're just taking a small hit in hash rate, but the GPU is pulling 20% less power, which means that you're getting a lot more hash rate per watt, which is really important. And so if you wanna learn how to overclock and find best efficiency, I have a full video guide on that. So I'll link that up in the card over there. And now, that's it for graphics cards. So let's move on over to the CPU. All right, guys, so I have this CPU in my hand here, which is the same CPU that I replaced in one of my mining rigs in a recent video on my channel. And so I'll link that video up there if you're curious. But basically, I didn't explain very well why I did that in my video. And you know, that is on me. I'm always learning on how to communicate better with you guys. And I got some comments for that, you know, on that video that, you know, had some good criticism. And, you know, I take that into account. And let me try to explain better in this video here, my reasoning behind doing this. So what I did was I replaced this, you know, normal CPU with a low wattage CPU and a fanless cooler. So a cooler that is just heat sinks that has no fan on it. And basically my reasoning for doing this was I wanted to test if that pulls less power than this with a powered fan cooler does. And the result was that yes, it does. It pulls about six to seven watts less or something like that, I think my result was. And so not a great uh, difference there. However, a lot of people pointed out that you know, most of that power saving was probably just due to the change of cooler and not necessarily the CPU because at you know, mining, like while we're mining, the CPU doesn't really do much and won't be pulling its full TDP, which is how much power it can pull under full load, which is you know, around 50 to 60 watts for this and 35 watts for the one that I replaced it with. And so that is very true. And what I didn't explain properly in my video is the cooler that I used, which is, you know, all just a heatsink and no fan, it can only cool around 40 or so watts of, you know, heat. Uh, if you use a CPU that consumes more power than that, the cooling capacity of that cooler uh, it's basically not going to cut it and it might risk your CPU overheating and your system dying basically. And so that is why I replaced the CPU because I wanted to make sure that no matter the situation, my CPU is basically physically not capable of pulling more power than, and generating more heat than my cooler is rated for 
um, you know, cooling capacity wise, if that makes sense. So I didn't want my CPU to pull more energy than my cooler could cool off basically. So that was my reasoning behind changing the CPU to a low wattage CPU. And I absolutely did not explain that properly in my video. And for that, I apologize. But so there you go. That is one way of saving power on your, you know, CPU, replacing it for a low wattage CPU so that you can have a fanless cooler. Now there is a second way of reducing the amount of power your CPU pulls, and that is by actually underclocking and undervolting it in the BIOS. Now I am absolutely far from an expert on doing that, so I'm not even gonna try to show you guys how to do that because I am sure there are a lot of much better videos on YouTube already on how to do that. So feel free to search that up. But basically you can reduce the amount of power that your sort of bare rig pulls by underclocking and undervolting your CPU. And so that is the last thing that I wanted to mention about how to reduce the power on your rig. And basically, just to reiterate, lowering the amount of power your rig pulls, of course, is gonna lead to bigger profits because you're paying for less electricity, right? Which is cool, which is what we want. But yeah, that's it for this video. Now, if you found this video helpful, then please give it one of these. I'd really appreciate it. And what you gotta do now is you gotta go check out Red Fox's video over there because this video is over. You can also click the picture on my face to subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate that. But yeah, go click on Red Fox's video and he'll see you there. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Goodbye, bye-bye.